Okay, let's take a look at the mechanism for the formation of this cyclic ether, starting from a diol and adding acid. Now remember, when we're writing the mechanism for a reaction, we're showing the flow of electrons, we're showing the pathway that the electrons flow to lead us to our product. So that's what we're going to be focusing on when we're writing out the mechanism for this reaction. Now, in the case of alcohols, when we add an acid, there's not a lot of options there. We're going to be focusing in on the lone pairs on our oxygen. Those are how we're going to start this mechanism off. We're going to get attack of that lone pair by the acid. When we do that, we're going to generate relatively reactive intermediate, an oxonium ion. Now this has kind of laid the foundation for the formation of our cyclic ether. If we look at this oxonium ion at the end here, we can see that's essentially just a water molecule tethered on to, to the end of this hydrocarbon. That's ready to go. So all we need is a nucleophile to displace that, and that's going to leave as water. Well, if we're looking for a nucleophile, we need to go down our chain here, alpha, beta, to the hydroxyl group. Alcohols are good nucleophiles. We've changed this alcohol into a good leaving group by adding acid. This alcohol at the other end is a good nucleophile. So now we've got everything we need for SN2 substitution. So all we're going to do is to then take this nucleophile, displace our leaving group. We're going to dehydrate, lose that water molecule. Our leaving group is water to give yet yeah, another oxonium ion species. So we're going to, with our cyclized product, with the exception that we protonated our oxygen. Well, that's easy enough for us to sort out. So all we're going to do is return those electrons to the oxygen of our ether, spit out a proton to give our target product. Now it's worth noting with our proton here that this proton started this whole reaction going. We then go through cyclized to give our ether, and then the last step is to regenerate that proton. Now when we write protons above reaction arrows, that usually implies we have a catalyst, and our mechanism is consistent with the proton behaving as a catalyst. That's a good check on our work generally is if we have a catalyst, then our mechanism should reflect that at the end we regenerate it. So this proton has now been liberated at the very end of this such that it can now go on and start this whole chain of events again for another equivalent of the diol. To give to methyl oxetane. Oxetane because it's a four member heterocycle with an, with an oxygen, and at the two position, we have a methyl group. So the question now becomes, what if we protonated the other end to start this going? So rather than choosing the oxygen on this side of the molecule, what if we just start off by protonating the other oxygen? Well, that's actually not mental. Um, what you should do is to rework this mechanism protonating the other hydroxyl group first and then seeing where that leads you. And what we should find is that you get the same product we got by protonating the other alcohol. Uh, it should not make a difference. But that's something for you to try to see how well you under the, understand the mechanism for forming this oxytane. Enjoy.